square roots, um, estimating with square roots, Pythagorean triples, using the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between two points. This first part right here, um, all we're really doing is looking at all the perfect squares, right? All of these things you see, square root of 1, square root of 4, square root of 9, square root of 16, they're all just the numbers because those are what we call the perfect squares. Um, when I'm down here, these are not perfect squares. So like, how do you end up evaluating without a calculator the square root of 2? Well, we're going to estimate. Again, it's only an estimate. It's not perfect. If you want it to be perfect, well, it can't be. That's an irrational number. So a decimal is always going to be an approximation of what it is. But the square root of 2, well, we know the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. So the square root of 2 is kind of in the middle of 1 and 2. So 1.4. Square root of 3, well, that's probably more like 1.7 because it's, it's not as big as the square root of 4, so it's not 2 yet, but it's, it's bigger and it's closer to that, so you say 1.7, okay? Square root of 5, what is it? Well, it's a little bit bigger than the square root of 4. We know the square root of 4 is 2, so then square root of 5 is maybe 2.2 or 2.3 or 2.1, somewhere in that range. Square root of 10, well, we know the square root of 9. Square root of 10 is just going to be a little bit bigger. So 3.2, 3.1, something like that. Square root of 20. I don't know the square root of 20, but it's somewhere in there. It's bigger than 4, and it's less than 5. The square root of 20 is going to be, we'll say, 4.5. 50. Square root of 50. All right, it's a little bit bigger, so it's like somewhere in there. It's the square root of 49 is 7, so the square root of 50 is maybe 7.1. 75. 75 is somewhere in there, right? Square root of 64 is 8. Square root of 81 is 9. Square root of 75, I don't know, 8.7. Something in that range. And 125. Well, I know the square root of 121, it's 11. So then the square root of 125, a little bit bigger. So maybe 11.2. These don't have to be perfect, but you should have an idea of, like a number sense of how big these radicals are. Um, remember, there, there are rational numbers. They just, their decimals just go on forever with no real pattern, but they're still, they're still numbers, they're still real numbers, and uh, you should have an idea of what they're close to as a decimal. All right, Pythagorean triples. These are only triples, so all of these are going to work out perfect. When I say perfect, I mean the three sides all are going to be integers, and I started you out with the, the easiest one, the classic 3, 4, 5. We know that a 3 by 4 by 5 triangle is a right triangle. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. So this is one where we didn't know the Pythagorean theorem. Here, you don't know this one, so I'll just set it up. 5 squared plus 12 squared equals what squared? That's me saying this. 25, 144, 169, and then take a square root. Square root is 169 is 13. So this is a 5, 12, 13 triangle. Again, very popular. 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, two of the smaller you know, kind of starter triangles for Pythagorean triples. Uh, now this one, you don't know the leg. So don't do 6 squared plus 10 squared. You have to do this. You know the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 10. So you can say 6 squared plus b squared equals 10 squared. 36, 100, 64, square root. Oh, that's 8. Sure, it's 8. This is just this triangle compared to this triangle. This triangle is just twice as big. This is the 3, 4, 5. This is a 6, 8, 10. This one over here, same thing. You know the hypotenuse is 20. What you don't know is a leg. So a squared plus 16 squared equals 20 squared. Subtract, 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 and you get 12. It turns out this triangle is actually that same triangle. It's just four times bigger. 3, 4, 5. 12, 16, 20. All of them are just four times bigger. They're actually just scale factors. We say they're similar triangles. This one, again, you know the hypotenuse. You don't know a leg, so just call it A. A squared plus 10 squared equals 26 squared, and it turns out you get 24. Right? It's another Pythagorean triple, the 5, 24, 26 triangle. And then you get this one where you don't know a leg, and so you say 9 squared plus b squared equals 15 squared, and you solve just like the same thing, and then you get 12. All right, now these, we're going to find the distances, but they're not going to work out nice. 
they're going to end up being radicals or roots. And so this is just, okay, this is a right triangle, and I want to find the hypotenuse. So 1 squared plus 2, sorry, 1 squared plus 1 squared equals c squared. 1 squared is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, and then once you get here, you just have to take the square root to finish. So that's what that hypotenuse would be. It would just be the square root of 2. Here we would do 1 squared plus 2 squared equals c squared. 1 plus 4 is 5, square root of 5. So the square root of 5 is exactly this length. 1 squared, now remember this one, 4 is the hypotenuse. What you don't know is the leg. So 1 squared plus b squared equals 4 squared. Subtract the 1 to get 15, and then once you get here, take a square root to find b equals the square root of 15, and that can't simplify. Same thing on all these. Again, this is the hypotenuse. This is a leg. Don't mix them up. Um, 5 squared plus 4 squared. This is an example where you end up with like 41 square root, and there's nothing to do. You can't factor it. 41 is a prime number. That's as simple as it gets. Same thing over here. When you get the square root of 15 as your answer for this length, that's all you can do. You can't simplify it. All right, now we, we just took a brief moment to look at similar triangles. And so if I tell you these triangles are similar, it just means that this is some scale factor bigger. Okay, and in this case, this is just twice as big. We looked at 12 compared to 24. Well, if that side's twice as big, then everything is twice as big. Okay, 5 goes to 10, 13 goes to 26. These are the same triangle. This is just twice as big. Same thing here. Take the 3, 4, 5 and double it. And you get the 6, 8, 10. Six, eight, ten. Double that again, and you get even a bigger triangle. That's 12, 16, 20. They're all the same triangle, same angles, same ratios, just different, diff different sizes of the same triangle. Okay, and this is something we'll certainly explore much more in terms of similar triangles and scale factors, but I just figured we could throw it in there now. All right, now we're going back to the Pythagorean theorem in terms of finding the distance between two points. So you start here, and you want to walk to here. How far do you got to walk? Well, just draw it here to here. And so what I'm saying is go ahead and make the right triangle. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, now you have a, now you have a triangle. But once you have a triangle, then you can do the Pythagorean theorem. So that distance just must be 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared, and you get a distance of 5. Here, 5 over and 12 up. Well, 5 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. 25 plus 144, take a square root of 169, and get 13. Same thing here, from there to there. Draw the triangle, draw the triangle, and then go. And this last part, I was just having you practice radicals. This is just all the Pythagorean theorem ones. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. You don't have to get these exact 10. You could, honestly, you could just say 30, 40, 50, 300, 400, 500, 12, uh, 100, 1600, 2000. You know, all of different versions of those would work. But certainly the 3, 4, 5 family and the 5, 12, 13 family are the most popular groups. And this is just me showing you how to reduce radicals again. Again, when you see 275, you're like, all right, is there a big perfect square that goes into it? Sure, 25. Square root of 25 is 5, eh, and the square root of 11 has to chill. I just got to chill. You can't do anything with it. 11 is a prime number. So you can see I always found a perfect square, a perfect square, a perfect square, perfect square, and perfect square. And then what you do is you take the square root of 64 and get 8. Square root of 81 and get 9. But the 7 and the 2 and the 2, they all have to just stay under the radical because you didn't actually do those yet. Okay, look over this, but we, we certainly have to reduce radicals, understand what a Pythagorean triple is, find the distance between two points using the Pythagorean theorem. I introduced what it meant to be similar, right, with ratios. Um, this is just finding missing sides or missing hypotenuse and uh, estimating radicals without a calculator. And then here are all the, the first 12 perfect squares.